Okay, so now we're going to go over what the standard deviation of the residuals are. Now, they're essentially um, the same basic idea as standard deviation that you've you know, been um, dealing with so far. You know, when we first learned about standard deviation in chapter two, we learned that is, you know, a number that's going to give us a value of about how off um, the observation values will be from the typical value. So it's a measure of spread. It's a measure that will tell you about how spread out the data values are from each other. You know, the bigger the standard deviation, the more spread out the values were. The, the um, smaller the standard deviation, the less spread. If you have a standard deviation of zero, that's essentially saying that every data value is the same because there's no spread at all. I mean, you, mean it's, you mean that every single data value is exactly the same. Now, the formula for um, the standard deviation is if you look, it's pretty it's pretty similar um, to you know the standard deviation of the residuals, except for you're you're dividing by n minus two instead of n minus one. Um, now the reason for that is it's a little bit more technical. Um, it has to do with you know degrees of freedom and approximation error, and that'll be um something that you'll cover in a more advanced stats class. The main idea you want to understand is that it's basically a number that's gonna give you an idea of how off your predictions will be. Because remember, we're using a least squares regression line to make predictions of what Y would be based on the X values. Now, as we know, the least squares regression line is not gonna give you perfect answers. It's not gonna give you perfect predictions. Your predictions aren't gonna be exact. So, they're gonna there's gonna be some you know some sort of error there's gonna be some sort of deviation like or the residual there's a residual so it's basically saying like what's the average residual um what's the average um distance that your predictions will be off from the least squares regression line so um let's go through a problem because it's really gonna make this a lot easier to understand and so we're gonna, we're gonna go through a problem where we deal with all of the data and everything in together that we're gonna have in this chapter. So here we, here we got um, the data that we were looking at earlier in this in this um in this chapter where we had the uh, sprint time versus long jump distance. You know we had this the um the, the class of twelve statistics students. You know they ran a 40, 40 yard sprint and then they long jumped. And here's another scatter plot again. And here's the, equ the equation of the least squares regression line already plotted here. And here's the residual plot even. And it tells us that the standard deviation of the residuals is 22.38 and the R squared is 0 0.702. So let's first work through each of these and you know I'll break this down when we get to um, part C here. So first we're gonna have calculate and interpret the residual for Christian with a sprint time of 7.25 inches and a long jump of 110 inches. Okay, so remember the residual is equal to the actual y value minus the predicted y. You know, so again, I could write actual y minus predicted y in words. Actual y minus predicted y. So his actual y value, his actual long jump, because those are the y values, was 110. His predicted y value would be the y value you would predict him to get based on this equation, which means that we need to plug in the 7.25 into that to get what we would, you know, have for y hat. So four. So 414.79 minus 45.74 times 7.25. And bang, we get 83.175. That taken away from 110 will give us 26. 0.825.
So this is our residual. Now, what does that mean in context? Well, this tells you how off the prediction was. I mean, in other words, when we use this equation to predict how long someone with a, uh, how long of a long jump someone with a with 7.25 sprint time would have, we would predict that they would have um, a long jump that was this much, and the actual one was 110. So um, if we actually draw this on, if you look at the scatter plot, I'll see if we can actually find it here. Yeah, it'll be this guy over here. That has a residual 26.825 that distance. Now, um, thinking like, well, so what does this mean specific, specifically? Like, this is saying that what happened is that Christian actually jumped longer than what we thought. He jumped 26.825 inches more than what we would predict by the least squares regression line. Good for him. What, what, a, what, a, what a champ out jumping on all the naysayers here. All right, so part B, is a linear model appropriate for these data? So for that, remember, we look at the residual plot, racer dust there. We want to look at the residual plot to see if there's no obvious pattern shown. If there's no obvious pattern shown, then it means that we're good to use a linear model for our data. And if you look here, we, it seems like the, there's no obvious pattern. It's like just random scatter. So then it'll be okay to use a residual plot or to use a, a linear model for this data because there's no obvious pattern in the residual plot. Part B. All right, now part C is interpret the standard deviation. All right, so our standard deviation was 22.38. Now, that essentially means that when we use this equation to make predictions about how far we think, you know, we think someone will jump based on their sprint time, our, our prediction will, will typically be off by about 22.38 inches from you know the actual value. So again, this is like our again our prediction error. It's, you know, it's it's basically our, our it's you know these vertical distances. You know, these predictions. You know, you see they're not they're not obviously all on the line. Some are above, some are below. Um, so we see on average the predictions would be off by about 22.38 inches. So again, it's similar to standard deviation that you've been um, using up to, you know, up to now. Now the R squared. Remember, this is the, um, this is the, the coefficient of variation or coefficient of determination, as we so put it. Now it says that R squared is 0 0.702. So we look, we interpret that as a percentage. So about 70.2%. So what we say is that about 70.2% of the variation in long jump distance can be accounted for by this least squares regression line that relates long jump distance with sprint time. Now, to elaborate more, you know, it's essentially saying that, um, you know, we, as we know, and like, you know, as we know in our everyday regular life, you know, people who are, tend to be faster, can probably jump farther, you know? That's pretty obvious. If you're slower, you're probably not going to jump as far. But we know that it's not strictly going to be dependent on, you know, on how fast you can run. How far you can jump is also may probably depend just on your body type, maybe your height, maybe your, um, just your proportions, maybe just your strength. Maybe you just, maybe you just have, um, gift, maybe you're just gifted. Um, but we do know there's a strong relationship. But again, it's not perfect. It's, if it was perfect, it would be that 100 variation, 100% of the variation could be accounted for by this least squares regression line. But in this case, it's about 70.2%. And that, that's pretty good. It's not super strong, but it's definitely not weak. And um, so we can basically say this is a pretty reliable, you know, this is a pretty reliable um, regression line that we can use to make predictions when, when, when making guesses about, you know, long jump distance.